Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number 1. Pat decided not to work this summer, after all. I was afraid of that. What does the woman mean? Number 2. I didn't understand today's chemistry lesson very well. Neither did I. What does the woman mean? Number 3. How do you like the soup? Kind of thick, isn't it? What does the man say about the soup? Number 4. I only slept three hours last night. I'd say you should take it easy today. What is the man suggesting to the woman? Number 5. Where can I have this tire fixed? Isn't there a service station nearby? What does the man imply? Number 6. Would you like me to turn on the lights? I can see just fine, thanks. What does the man imply? Number 7. Do you think I'll be able to find the book I need for math class? If they're not all sold out. What does the man mean? Number 8. Has Susan told you about her trip overseas? Only a hundred times. What does the man mean? Number 9. What should I do with this pile of books? Oh, just leave them on the circulation desk and we'll shelve them in the morning. What are the speakers doing? Number 10. Do you think Mr. Grant will give Ben a raise? Not on your life. What does the woman mean? Number 11. Excuse me, can you tell me where the nearest bank is? Try asking at the gas station on the corner. What can we assume about the woman? Number 12. The new cabinets came in today. Oh, so you did send for them after all. What had the woman assumed?
Number 13. This movie has the best plot of any I've seen in years. Too bad the same can't be said of the acting. What does the woman mean? Number 14. If the rain doesn't stop soon, we could be in for some flooding. I'll say. What does the woman mean? Number 15. Since when do you study 16 hours a day? Since I saw my final grades from last semester. What can we assume about the woman? Number 16. Their flight will arrive on time, won't it? The weather report doesn't sound too good. What does the woman mean? Number 17. Good news! I bought us tickets to the jazz concert on Wednesday night. Oh, no, not that one. What does the man mean? Number 18. George sure seems excited about playing on the basketball team. I wish he felt the same about his studies. What does the woman imply about George? Number 19. Would you mind taking a picture of me with my parents? Where do you want to stand? What can be inferred about the man? Number 20. Too much is going on today, and I'm starting to get confused. I can see that. You've lost your car keys three times already. What does the woman mean? Number 21. Did you hear about the extra paper we have to write for Dr. O'Dowd's class? I sure did. What a drag. What does the woman say about the paper? Number 22. I've been waiting to see the doctor for over an hour now. What's going on? He had an emergency call this morning, and he still hasn't caught up on his appointments. What does the man mean? Number 23. I'm going to go shopping this afternoon. Stop in at the music store. They're having a big sale. What does the man mean? Number 24. Shall we order a pizza, or do you want to go out and get something? Let's go try that new restaurant near the campus. What do both women want to do? Number 25. Let's not forget to roll up the car windows. It's not supposed to rain, you know. What does the woman mean?
Number 26. Professor Smith wasn't supposed to be tough. But she certainly turned out to be, didn't she? What does the man think about Professor Smith? Number 27. I can't remember how long our final paper is supposed to be. 25 pages, but the professor said not to worry if it's a little shorter than that. What did the professor tell the students? Number 28. Boy, is Greg ever in a bad mood today. If I were you, I'd steer clear of him. What does the woman suggest the man do? Number 29. What was the graduation ceremony like? I thought it would never end. What does the man mean? Number 30. Do you think Mary would like some more coffee? Well, her cup is empty. What does the woman imply about Mary? This is the end of Part A. Part B. Directions. In this part, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to the following conversation. What can I do for you? Well, I've broken my glasses, and I wondered if you could fix them here for me. Well, let me have a look at them. They're broken pretty badly, actually. I don't think they can be repaired. I was afraid of that. Well, I suppose I should choose new frames, then. Yes, that would probably be the best idea. Have you looked at any of ours yet? Yes, a little, but I haven't seen anything I liked so far. Well, if you don't see anything you like here in the office, we can always order frames for you from one of our catalogs. I suppose so. But if I find frames I think I like in one of your catalogs, am I obligated to buy them after you order them? I mean, what if I don't like them once I actually try them on? That's no problem. If you aren't satisfied with the frames we order, we just send them back to the company we ordered from and you can try again. Okay. Well, let's have a look. Number 31. Where does this conversation take place? Number 32. What does the woman want? Number 33. What does the man advise the woman to do? Number 34. According to the man, if the woman doesn't find what she wants in the store, what can she do?
questions 35 through 37. Listen to a conversation between two students about selecting courses. Have you chosen your options for interdisciplinary studies yet? I've just turned mine into the registrar's office, but the deadline is tomorrow by 4 p.m. What do you mean? I've already pre-registered for that course. We did it together, remember? Yes, but did you select your options? The course is one semester, but you have to take four different mini-courses within that time. That's news to me, but it sounds interesting. Where do I find a list of the choices? I got mine in the mail a week after I pre-registered for the course. Why don't you come to the library with me and I'll make you a copy? There are ten different options and a required reading list. Okay, thanks if it's not too much bother. What are you going to take for the first four weeks? Well, there's really no choice for the first four weeks. Everyone attends the interdisciplinary lecture series Tuesday afternoons and study discussion groups on Thursdays. This is to give us all the same basic information. But in the second session, I want to take art history, then literature in the last session. Well, I'm really glad you mentioned this. I need to get that list and make some decisions. You've probably started reading already, right? As a matter of fact, that's why I'm on my way to the library. Number 35. How does the man react when he first hears about the deadline? Number 36. How did the woman know about the course selection requirement? Number 37. What will the two people probably do next? This is the end of Part B. Part C. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 38 through 42. Listen to a talk given by the leader of a hiking club. Before we ask how many of you will be going on the wilderness survival hike, I'd like to review the guidelines for winter safety. If you ever get lost in the woods, the first thing you should do is sit down and collect your wits. Make a camp and prepare a signal and wait for rescue to come to you. Once you are situated, there are other things you can do to cope while stranded in the wilderness. First of all, try to locate a source of water. You can go a month, if necessary, without food, but only about seven days without a drink. Any time your lips feel dry, you need water. However, never eat snow to quench your thirst. It will counter dehydration, but in melting the snow... Your body loses precious heat, and the deadly effects of hypothermia are accelerated. You can fight hypothermia in other ways, too. Even if the temperature is in the 50s, uncontrolled loss of body heat can be fatal. Cover your head, and thus reduce your heat loss by half. Dress as warmly and with as many layers as possible. Get out of the wind and stay dry. Keep active but avoid perspiring. Water conducts heat away from your body 240 times faster than air does. We've covered water and warmth. Now let's consider food in the wilderness. Don't eat potentially dangerous plants. These include all types of mushrooms and other fungi, beans and bulbs. 
Also, any wild berries that are either red or white should be avoided. As a precaution, be sure you have packed plenty of packets of dehydrated food to tide you over in an emergency. Okay, we don't anticipate anyone getting lost, as you are all going out with experienced guides. Let's see a show of hands of those of you who plan to join us on the hike. Number 38. According to the speaker, what is the first thing to do if you get lost? Number 39. What's the greatest danger of eating snow to satisfy your thirst? Number 40. According to the speaker, what is the best way to reduce body heat loss by half? Number 41. Why does the speaker feel that the hikers shouldn't worry too much about the upcoming hike? Number 42. How will the speaker know who wants to join the hike? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a lecture given in a marine biology class. Imagine a frigid world filled with creatures that shine with an eerie green or blue or red light in a landscape of eternal darkness. It may sound like a scene from science fiction, but this place actually exists in every ocean on Earth. It's called the Midwater, and it is by far the largest and most mysterious wilderness on the planet. Scientists tell us that we know little about this enormous environment for one simple reason. It's hard to get to it. During the past few years, scientists have begun to use small submarines with spotlights and cameras to explore the midwater. Using these devices, they have found many plants and animals that have never been seen before. The most abundant animals in the midwater are the jellies. These are jellyfish and their relatives. The most interesting jellies are tiny animals that join and form huge chains sometimes reaching more than a hundred feet in length. Some other kinds of fish also call the midwater home, including such fierce hunters as the dragonfish and the devilfish, which come equipped with razor-sharp teeth and huge stomachs. Perhaps the most remarkable discovery about the animals of the midwater is that nearly all of them produce their own light, as a firefly does. Scientists think that some animals glow or bioluminesce to attract a mate, others to find prey, and still others to scare away predators. Yet many creatures produce light only at certain times, and for no clear reason. The explanation for this behavior remains one of the many puzzles of the midwater that future scientists must solve. Number 43. Where can the midwater be found? Number 44. According to the speaker, why are the small jellies interesting? Number 45. According to the speaker, why do we know so little about the midwater? Number 46. According to the speaker, what is one characteristic of midwater animals that is not yet completely explained?
Questions 47 through 50. Listen to a science professor talk about gold. For at least 6,000 years, people have been fascinated by gold. They have used it in pottery, jewelry, religious objects, clothing, and even medicine. In ancient times, it was also molded into magnificent death masks for kings and other royalty. Gold has been valued through the centuries because of its beauty and indestructibility. It does not tarnish or discolor, and it resists corrosion. Gold is also quite soft and easy to work with. It can be hammered into very thin sheets, so thin that light shines through them. These sheets are used for decorative lettering and other artistic purposes. Many churches and government buildings have domes covered with thin layers of gold. This not only makes the domes highly resistant to weathering, it also gives the buildings an aura of beauty and richness. Dentists also appreciate the softness of gold. They use it to make fillings for teeth. Today, gold is widely used in the electronics industry, partly because it conducts electricity so well. It is indispensable in pocket calculators, computers, telephones, televisions, missiles, and spacecraft. Glass, coated with a thin layer of gold, is also used in skyscrapers to reflect summer sun and to retain winter heat. The use of gold in one building in Canada lowered air conditioning costs by 40 percent. The discovery of gold in California in 1849 encouraged the westward expansion of the United States. Large gold discoveries in other countries have also resulted in new settlements and increased exploration. Gold has even brought development to the Arctic Circle, where the most northerly gold mine in the world exists. This mine yields $100 million in gold annually. Gold exploration continues all over the world. Who knows where the next rich source of gold may be found? Number 47. According to the speaker, why has gold been continuously popular for 6,000 years? Number 48. Why does the softness of gold make it so useful? Number 49. According to the speaker, what purpose does gold serve in the construction of skyscrapers? Number 50. According to the speaker, what often happens to an area after gold is discovered?